The Legion Pro laptops are now separated in an additional lineup, and the devices really deserve it, giving many studio and creator laptops a run for their money. They are pricey, but that's why there's a more expensive and a less expensive model, which still doesn't come cheap. The Legion Pro 5 keeps the 16-inch displays but adds 13th generation Intel HX series processors and high-powered RTX 40 series graphics. On the outside, this is a traditional Legion laptop, with a stealthy onyx gray color and an anodized surface. The lid is made of aluminum, while the rest of the device is made of plastic. It's not the lightest machine out there, at 2.55 kilograms and a thickness of 26.75 millimeters, however, we still find it manageable considering everything else you're getting. It also helps with durability. The lid itself is easy to open with one hand, showing off the thin bezels around the display. On top we have either a 720p or a 1080p webcam, along with a couple of holes for microphones. Moving to the base, the keyboard is pure perfection. Not only does it bring a numpad, but is backlit in either white or blue, while a 4-zone RGB setup is present as well. What makes it truly great is the long key travel and clicky feedback, so it's a joy for both typing and gaming. We can't forget the touchpad, as the Mylar surface is smooth and the responsiveness is even more impressive. Legions have always brought great input-output to the table, and the Pro 5 doesn't disappoint. On the left side, there's one USB Type-A 3.2 Generation 1 port and one USB Type-C 3.2 Generation 2 port, which also has DisplayPort 1.4 support. The main show is on the back, with the power plug, two more USB Type-A ports, an HDMI 2.1 FRL port with up to 8K at 60Hz or 4K at 120Hz, one more Type-C port, this time with both power delivery up to 140 watts and DisplayPort 1.4 support and a LAN port. Lastly, on the right, there's a shutter switch for the webcam, an audio jack, and one last USB Type-A port. We have nothing bad to say about the QHD plus 240 Hz IPS display, as it's got high brightness, maxing out at 396 nits, and 96% sRGB coverage, so the colors are punchy and really pop. Furthermore, you can pair it with our design and gaming profile, which also improves the accuracy significantly, giving us a Delta E value of 1.3. To clarify, the human eye can't really spot the difference with a value below one, so the display does have true-to-life colors. We'll have our display profiles linked down below. Audio is important too, with a stereo setup consisting of two 2 watts units found on the bottom. It doesn't show any significant deviations from clarity across the frequency range, however, the max volume could have been a tad higher. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. In terms of performance, we have the Raptor Lake HX series, represented by the Core i513-500HX, Core i713-700HX, and Core i913-900HX. We tested the Core i5, which has 14 cores and 20 threads, the same as the Core i713-700H. However, the Core i5 has a higher 55 watts base TDP, so in theory it should be more powerful, right? Well. In Cinebench R23, it still scores behind the Core i7 inside the MSI Pulse 15. The RTX 4060 GPU inside does significantly better than the RTX 3060 from last year's Legion 5 Pro, while being around 10 to 15 percent behind the RTX 4070 and the RTX 3070 Ti. In practice, this means that it can effortlessly handle 1440p games. Our list of games includes Borderlands 3, which manages to run at 90 FPS on the badass settings preset. Keep in mind that these tests are done on an external 1080p monitor, so it taps directly into the RTX 4060 graphics for the best possible performance.
Next on the list is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, with the laptop reaching 77 FPS on the Ultra Settings preset. The last game that we run is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has proven itself as a title that puts every GPU to work. Here, the RTX 4060 reaches 103 FPS on the highest preset, so you know you can bring up the resolution further to 1440p or the native 1600p that's on the Legion Pro 5. Make contact with the high console. Yes, sir. Even after the fiasco in Brazil. The performing hardware needs good cooling to work properly, and Lenovo hasn't lacked in that department so far. Here we have a four-pipe setup with two fans. In the CPU stress test, the Core Y5 reaches 157 watts and close to 4 gigahertz on the P cores, while the E cores run rampant as well, running at above 3 gigahertz. In the later stages of the test, the wattage drops to 129 watts at the 30-second mark, while running at 110 watts for more than 15 minutes. The GPU doesn't reach its full 140 watts limit, instead maintaining 100 watts for longer than 30 minutes, with a clock speed of more than 2600 megahertz. In terms of comfort, the laptop can be a bit loud at full blast, especially when using the Extreme Performance preset. In terms of temperatures, things don't get too heated, as the base maintains a hotspot of 41 degrees Celsius. The battery pack, even at 80 watt hours, still struggles to keep up with the hardware, lasting for 5 hours and 13 minutes of web browsing or 4 hours and 4 minutes of video playback. Lastly, in terms of upgrades in the future, the Legion Pro 5 comes with two sodium slots for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, as well as two M2 PCIe X4 slots for Generation 4 SSDs. For the whole upgrade procedure, check out our teardown video that's linked below. The Lenovo Legion Pro 5 has changed a bit from last year, however. As much as things are different, they still stay the same as the essence of the laptop is the same, and that's to walk the line between the best gaming experience and the best creator experience. It does that very well, while at a price point that's more accessible than the flagship Legion Pro 7. For our full review of the Legion Pro 5, go over to our website laptopmedia.com. The link to the review can be found below.